Hello and welcome my friends. Welcome to another episode where I review modern fountain pens. Today I have for you a modern fountain pen I believe made in the 1970s or in the 1980s but I might be mistaken. I bought it as it is in this box and I have serious doubts that this is the original box of it. And why do I say that, friends? So first of all, we have a producer in Shanghai, China. We have uh, that logo, I believe, with the three stars. But most important, we have fine line automatic pencil. So it's not a fine line fountain pen. We have the number 700. And practically this is the box, not no other imprints on it. As I open the box, guys, we can see a beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. And when I saw these pictures with the fountain pen, I said to myself, look, what a wonderful combination of red colors. This is surely its original package and I might overpay for it so guys I'm uh, telling you now the price I paid 90 lays for it so approximately 18.20 euros or 21.10 American dollars I was uh, let's say hooked on it when I saw those Chinese characters, by the way, guys, maybe you can translate them for me. I'm uh, curious to see what they write. Maybe I will give you a little zoom. I'm not so sure how this works. So they are definitely engraved, technically engraved on the plastic body and uh, are highlighted with that gold color. I don't know what they stand or what they mean, but I know what is written on the cap. And we have H E K O G, so He Kog. And we have another two Chinese characters and an AB engraved at the end of the cap. So guys, in case you are not familiar with the Chinese fountain pens, this is a Chinese fountain pen. It has this nice looking hooded nib and it has this filling mechanism, which reminds us of a Parker 51 with the aerometric filling mechanism. In fact, I have here an original Parker 51 and I want to show it to you in comparison with this Chinese, let's say, uh, not a fake product, but a copy. I would call it a homage to the famous Parker 51. Of course, they stole the, its uh, design, but no problem, it is what it is. By the way, guys, I have also inside of the box, we have 700, 0 0.5 millimeters, and I think it refers to the size of the mechanical pencil, automatic pencil uh, nib. Uh, not nib, but uh, replacement uh, mine again Shanghai China so I'm not so sure if it's, if it's uh, the original box now I promised you a Parker and this is a special special NOS Parker left in its box I believe it never was used it is um, made it was made in England specific for the or Austrian market or German speaking market but on the leaflet uh, it is mentioned it was made for Austria 
it comes in this wonderful wonderful box let me leave it aside if we put the sorry yes if we put them side by side we can see that the parker 51 is a little bit longer now let me give you a zoom guys even more so this chinese model has the flat top and when i see a chinese model with a flat top i automatically think of the end of the 70s and all of the 1980s they started simplifying their products uh, in the beginning they all used also jewels they mimic perfectly this arrow shaped clip in this case we have a cheap looking clip but a functional clip you can see it has a spring over here basically this cap is made out of a light light metallic part is quite simple and i think it is uh, made at a reasonable cheap price okay i will put the cap here now we will concentrate on the body of each and everyone again let me give you a little zoom this is the famous hooded nib on our model we can see we have an oblique nib this seems to be a fine nib maybe a medium nib on the back we see differences between the feeds but in overall the same the same design here we have made in england and here we have that chinese characters you can see now the difference in the body the chinese is a little bit smaller in length and indeed we have an nos product and let me show them to you guys even our product from england is an nos it seems to have been filled at one point with ink but i'm not so sure i think that was the original color of the ink sack uh built quality interesting and a large uh, capacity of ink definitely on the original parker 51 now let's turn our attention to the chinese model i want to disassemble it to see what how easy it is to disassemble just take it off this is the metallic rod by pushing it it pushes also on this sack it creates vacuum and it draws up ink for the ink to be drawn to be sucked in the uh, plastic plastic sack we have this breathing tube yes judging by it it was never used or it was such it was clean in such a way that you can see no 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 residues of ink so this is in anonymous condition guys and i will feel it for you for the first time right here <laughs> of course i won't do that with that original parker but uh, those chinese uh, pens are still available they made them by millions and uh, most of them not all survived in their original box in an nos condition i'm in an nos condition so although maybe this is not the original box i love the box i love the pen and uh, i think i did okay on the price so guys let me assemble it again so it's quite easy as you can see just no need to rotate it maybe if you want to align this rod with the nib you can do it like this you can see it now it's aligned i will put back the barrel i will put back the cap and 
I will leave it on the desk because uh, now I need to leave you its dimensions on the screen. Till then, guys, I will leave the dimensions of the Chinese fountain pen on the screen and I will assemble the original beautiful, beautiful Parkat 51. Whenever I see a Chinese model, I have to tell you uh, that I think of the iconic Parker 51 guys and of its iconic aromatic filling mechanism. Now, for the writing sample, it is a red pen and I have to have a red ink. I will use this Faber Castell red ink 30 milliliters it is a permanent fountain pen ink red cannot be erased okay is that a erasable ink i will give it a little shake guys and with your permission i will change the angle of the camera for you to see better the writing sample okay so <laughs> i must tell you that uh, one thing that i loved about this fountain pen and uh, about the overall appearance of it is the box it is this uh, stars over here it reminds me of the red army or it has some red communist elements especially when you see this uh, quite quite daring combination between red and those uh, yellow characters i find it fascinating it's a communist made product in made in the 1980s maybe i'm mistaken maybe it was made in the 1990s but judging about some of its characteristics i tend to to place it in the 1980s guys okay i hope it will work for the first time as you saw it it was never inked let me see if we can post it yes you can see it posts quite securely and it gives a little balance to the fountain pen by the way guys this is quite a light fountain pen uh, at least without the ink the ink will add approximately one gram to it i will uh, open the barrel i will need also a tissue i hope i have one lying around here let me search for it where is the tissue? I need it. I took it and I placed it somewhere. Maybe I took it here. Maybe I did not. Take it here. Always be prepared, guys, with a little tissue. So, this is the pan. Let me give you a zoom out to see what I'm doing. Okay, I will insert it like this. Now, I will squeeze that lever. One, two. Hmm. I think it has a little bit of problems because I don't see some bubbles right there. Not so sure. It has drawn the ink. Let me clean this part, the grip section. Now I'm just quite curious to see if it drew the ink. I'm repeating the same procedure. No, it doesn't. Oh yes, it. Now you can see it draws the ink. 
for the first time. I think I have sufficient ink. No need to fill all of it. Okay. I hope it will write. Okay. Guys, always put back the cap on the bottle of ink to avoid accidents. And now I am ready for the writing sample. So again, I'm just looking at the producer's name. So you can see it is Hecog. Hecog. Okay, I will leave it there. And now let me see. So we have a he, he, cog. I have some problems with the ink flow. Yes, definitely some problems with the ink flow. And uh, just for those problems, I think I will need to fill up the whole reservoir if I can. So the same procedure, guys. I will put it here. I will put it in the ink and try to to create enough vacuum to draw the ink. I'm not so sure it has enough uh, vacuum. Maybe it's, it's leaking. I'm not so sure about this. So again, I will put back the barrel and let's try to continue our writing sample. So you can see, maybe a little zoom, yes. We have a Hecog uh, fountain pen. It was made in Shanghai, China. Shanghai, China. I think it was made in the 1980s. It came to me in that box. I'm not so sure if that box was original, but let's call it an NOS model. Never new, out of stock, NOS model. Okay, guys, this has a steel nib. Again, I'm curious about those imprints. Maybe you can find out what they mean. And leave it, uh, leave the, the meaning in the comments. So a steel nib. This is a hooded nib. Hooded nib. In the same style as the Parker. Parker 51. It writes quite smooth. And judging by the way it writes, I think this could be called the F for fine nib fine nib guys with a hooded nib i'm almost sure that we don't have flexibility but let me show you so no flex guys uh, you already saw the juiciness it's not such a juicy nib but it does its work so a medium juice i will say now the pressure test here no pressure and here a little bit of pressure but we can see no significant line variance if i try to do a signature with it it does a signature quite quite nice of course i prefer a much more juicier nib when i do my signatures but it is what it is it's Definitely, uh, you can use it as a signature pen. Let me see the reverse writing, if it is possible. Reverse 
writing. And guys, it writes better than uh, in uh, its original form. Let me show you even uh, juicy. Yes, it seems to have a better inflow in this position. Definitely, yes, definitely a possibility. And now I think I've done all the tests with it. So reverse writing, the flex, the line variance, the signature, and I hope I covered the, all the tests. So now I am ready to tell you about the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog whoa guys what can i tell you i'm quite impressed with this chinese made fountain pen again guys this is the classic design that conquered all the communist states back in the 1970s 1980s so if you were a student or a school people in that period of time and you learned in russia or eastern europe you had the possibility of choosing between the chinese fountain pens and the fountain pens made by your local producers and the problem with the local producers is the fact at least in romania the local producers were encouraged to sell their better products on the outside market to bring in uh, foreign currency to inside the country it was a great ambition of the dictator nicolae ceausescu to settle all its debts with the uh, financial with the FMI and the uh, International Monetary Fund. Uh, it was his ambition to to be independent and to return all the loans. So uh, the regime needed her current uh, currency, foreign currency. Uh, back then, uh, American dollars, maybe Deutsche Marks, and that's why all the Romanian producers had to sell their better products outside the market. Inside the market, they sold their um, default products or a low quality, inferior uh, um, inferior line of products. And when the Chinese came to the market with this simple Parker 51 design, and they didn't sell uh, cheap, they were quite expensive, sometimes they were at double the prices of the Romanian products, but they were quite efficient, they didn't leak, as you can see, um, quite well made, it depends, even on the Chinese product, you could uh, have the luck to buy yourself a defect of, uh, default uh, product that had uh, problems with the inflow or problems with the um, leakage of link ink so it was a disaster but believe me guys between the local products and the chinese products those chinese products in general had a higher quality than their uh, other choices in the communist uh, uh, market of fountain pens so guys this was my review i like this fountain pen a lot wherever you are have a nice day friends i want to thank you for your time well, thank you for your view if you enjoyed this review of uh, communist chinese fountain pen please subscribe to my channel to support my activity I will see you again at the next episode. Till then, please stay safe in this pandemic time. Uh, thank you again. And God bless you all. Bye-bye.